you're starting to look at organic compounds. Organic compounds are carbon-containing compounds. A subgroup of that are the hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons contain only carbon and hydrogen. So in that category, we have a, a broad distinction between aliphatic hydrocarbons and aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic hydrocarbons are based on this six carbon ring with alternating single and double bonds. That means each of those carbons has a unhybridized P orbital. They all have the sp2 hybridization. It's an unhybridized P orbital. And um, this allows the creation of a um, set of molecular orbitals that will circle the whole ring. And um, that uh, allows the electron pairs to flow around the whole ring. This really stabilizes the rings. So benzene is our smallest um, member of this aromatic um, category. But then these aromatic categories can stack together to make what we call polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And they're common feature of complex uh, molecules, including hormones. So that's a special category with those six member rings with alternating single double bonds. In the aliphatic category, we have um, alkanes. Alkanes will only have carbon-carbon single bonds. They can be cyclic though, forming a ring. And um, if, as long as it's not the benzene ring, it'll be an alkane. If it has a carbon-carbon double bond, it's an alkene. And a carbon-carbon triple bond will be an alkyne. We're going to focus on alkanes right now in this video. Let's look at a couple more parts of this. So there's different ways that we can draw an alkane. So this is an easy way, our condensed structural form. So this uh, CH4, CH3, 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 CH2, CH3. So this is showing how many hydrogens are on each carbon. Carbon loves to form chains. They can be straight chains or branch chains, but the carbon loves to form chains. So we're given the carbon chain and then how many hydrogens are on each carbon. We could draw out in a Lewis structure. We use uh, the ball and stick models. And then this is the shorthand notation. So uh, this is propane, a three carbon um, alkane. And this is also propane, a three carbon alkane. So at the end of each line or the bend of each line, there's a carbon. So we have three carbons here. We're only showing the carbon-carbon bonds. We're not showing the hydrogens. We know that each carbon contains four bonds. So any missing bonds are hydrogen. If we had anything besides hydrogen, we would have to write it out explicitly besides hydrogen and carbon. So the naming system for these naming system for um, our carbons, alkanes, when we have a one carbon, it's a methane. So one carbon would be methane, two carbons ethane, 
three carbons propane, four carbons butane. So those first four are unique to organic chemistry, the, the root of the name, meth, eth, prop, but. Beyond that, we get to our normal prefixes. So five carbons are pentane. You know, five is a pent, as in the pentagon. Uh, six carbons is hexane, seven would be heptane, eight would be octane, nine nonane, ten decane. Then over here, we're showing the number of isomers that we can actually get. So uh, starting with butane is the first one where we can get isomers. So isomer would be the same chemical formula, but a different structure. And each of those structures is going to get a official name that is unique to itself. Uh, but uh, we will sell uh, containers of hexanes with an S, showing that as a mixture of these isomers. And they'll have a similar boiling points and other properties. So as we go up, the number of isomers increases exponentially uh, for these compounds. And those same groups can be side groups also. So if we have a, a single carbon, in this case, to get it to be a side group, we have to take one of the hydrogens away from methane to make it stick off of the side group. So if the CH3 is a side group, instead of calling it methane, we call it methyl. So we're turning the ending of side groups into a YL ending. Uh, ethane as a side group would be ethyl, and there's only one way that we can have an ethyl group. But once we have three carbons, propane, now we're going to start to attach them in different ways. So three carbons as a straight chain coming off uh, the main chain would be propyl. But if the three carbons is attached with the middle carbon, that's called isopropyl. Butane, four carbons. If it's all in one straight chain, it's butyl. If it's coming off of a middle carbon, off a straight chain, it's sec butyl for secondary butyl. And then another version of butane, another isomer, is isobutane. This would actually have the official name of being methylpropane. We'll cover names in a moment. But um, if we had this coming off with one of the three N carbons, it would be called an isobutyl. And in both these cases with the iso, we see a branching occurring. So it's coming off and branching two different ways. It's coming off and branching two different ways. The other way is if the middle carbon is attached to the main chain, and that's a tertiary butyl, tert butyl, or T butyl. So this is showing our first um, set of isomers for these organic compounds. So C4H10, we can have all one straight line, or we can have a chain of three with a side branch. So again, it'll get a unique name for each and every compound. And we'll go over the naming here. So this branch point will actually give us two methylpropane as the official name for that isomer of uh, butane. And then uh, a pentane could be a straight line of five carbons, four carbons in one side chain, three carbons in two side chains. So each of them gets a unique name, which we'll cover the naming convention in a moment. And for the naming, what we're going to do, uh, the parent is going to be how many carbons in the longest chain that we can get. The suffix for alkene will be A-N-E. For alkene, it will be E-N-E. -E. For an alkyne, it will be Y-N-E. -E. So we're going to be dealing with the alkanes, the A-N-E suffix right now. The parent is how many carbons in the longest chain. And then the prefix are the substituents, the side chains. 
and where they are located, a numbering system. Alkanes can be cyclic, and uh, we'll come back and look at this after we name others, but we're going to be putting the word cyclo in front of the ring on these cyclic alkanes. And then we can add some other things onto the alkane and still call it an alkane. Uh, so we can have uh, halogens uh, on the alkane, we'll still call it the alkane or nitro group. And um, for these substituents, we like to have the ending of that in an O. So fluorine comes fluoro, chlorine comes chloro, bromine comes bromo, iodine comes iodo, and our tube comes nitro. And uh, we'll cover the names. Uh, so the, this is using the same naming convention that we're going to cover in a moment. So it's going to be the um, the root here is the meth. We have one uh, carbon, one e carbon carbon single bond, so it's methane. So we have a bromomethane. So we have two chlorines on our methane. We use a prefix to identify how many are present. So that's a dichloromethane. But once we get up into bigger compounds, we're going to have to tell us where these side groups are. So for ethane with two chlorines on it, we have Two possible structures. Both chlorines can be on the same carbon, that becomes a 1 1 dichloroethane, or they can be in separate carbons, so that becomes a 1 2 dichloroethane. So for naming these alkanes, we're going to uh, look for the longest carbon chain. So that's where we just trace from one end to the other end without lifting our pencil off or taking deviations. So we're looking for that longest carbon chain. That's going to be the parent of this system. So that longest carbon chain is the parent. We're dealing with alkanes, so we know our suffix is going to be an A N E. As we identify our longest carbon chain, we're going to identify side chains. And if we're when we're looking for the longest carbon chain, we find two that are the same number of carbons, but they have different types of side chains. We want to pick the one that has the simpler side chains, less complex side chains. We identify our side chains. There's always two ways to number uh, these compounds. Uh, so we're going from the end, and there's two ends. So we check both directions and see which one will give us the lowest set of numbers. That's the numbering system that we want to use. When we name our side chains, we're going to name them alphabetically, uh, um, place them alphabetically, and we're going to ignore the prefixes when we do that. If we have multiple of the same side chains, we're going to use prefixes of di, tri, tetra, penta. And then we assemble our name together. So for this compound here, we look for our longest side chain. We got that one, two, three, four, five. So we got five going across. We want to check our options, and it turns out we can go five this way, we can go five that way, we can go five this way. So we have multiple ways of getting five in a row on this. But five is pentane, so that is our root name. And no matter how we go, we're always having side groups of, of metals, not getting different types of side groups. So if we just take the horizontal one, we're going to have three methyl side groups. So if we went up, we still have one, two, three. So no matter how we go, we're always going to have one, two, three side, side methyl groups. So we have a, a trimethyl pentane.
we write these names without internal capitalization and without spaces. But trimethylpentene doesn't tell us where these methyl groups are. So that's our next step that we have to do. So we can do um, the one, two, three, four, five. Or we could do a one, two, three, four, five. Using the bottom one will give us a two, four, four trimethyl. The top one gives us a two, two, four trimethyl. So the top one gives us our lowest set of numbers. So we're going to have our uh, one, two, two, four. So our 224 trimethylpentane. So when we have multiple numbers, we separate them with commas. We separate our numbers from our words with uh, hyphens. And we don't put spaces between the various components inside the name. So let's uh, go the opposite direction here from a name to a compound. So we look at the root, butane. So we got four. Um, carbons present, so we draw out a chain of four carbons. And uh, should be doing this, leaving room so I can put hydrogens in if needed. So we got uh, our four carbons of butane. We have four methyls to put on this. We have our numbers. So it doesn't matter now what side we start from, because we have a fresh, clean slate. So one, two, three, four. So I got a two, two with methyls. So a CH3, CH3. Then we have a three, three methyl. CH3, CH3. So that's all the side groups. We make sure all the carbons have four bonds. So this will have a CH3 on the end and a CH3 here. We don't need the numbers anymore, so we take those numbers off. And that is our 2233 tetramethylbutane. <laughs> So let's try to name this one. So we look for our longest chain. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We could do one, two, three, four, five. 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 So there's a bunch of different ways that we can get five out of this. So that means we're dealing with a pentane again. And let's look at some of the options here. So let's take uh, this as one of our options. And straight across is our other option here. So if we're going straight across, we're going to have a, a methyl, a ethyl, a methyl. If we're using the curved one here, we're going to have a isopropyl coming off right there and a methyl. So methyls and ethyls are more simplistic than the isopropyl. So we don't want to use the isopropyl one. This is not a good route for us to use. So we're just going to take the one straight across. So we're going to have a um, ethyl and a methyl. So ethyl E before methyl M. So we're going to have a dimethyl pentane. Clean that up a little bit. Dimethylpentene. We know we're going to have a number associated with that, so let's leave a room for two numbers there. 
we have an ethyl and we're going to need a number in front of that. So what's our numbering system now? We could do a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And in this particular case, we're going to have a 2,4 dimethyl and a 3 ethyl in either direction. So that's the bottom numbers, top numbers. Again, 2,4 dimethyl, 3 ethyl. So in this case, the numbering conventions don't change our results. It's going to be a 2,4 dimethyl and a 3 ethyl. So we have our 3 ethyl, 2,4 dimethyl pent. Let's do one more in a different direction. We're given a name and we're asked, is this correct? The grad student gave us this name, is it correct? So let's draw it out and see if it makes sense. So our root is pentane, so we have five carbons. We can number it. From either end, we have a clean slate. We have a one methyl and a five methyl. We fill in our hydrogens, we need two there, two, 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 two. So, is this a good answer coming off of this? And this can happen easily. If we draw up like this, we have a habit of just taking the horizontal line as the name, but the name, the line is actually bigger. It bends, so if we're not watching for that bend, we might not see it. But overall, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven carbons in one row. So instead of having a branch here, we just have a bend. So we really have a heptane. Let's go back and look at our cyclic alkanes now. So our cyclic ones. <laughs> Now we take our, our ring and that becomes our parent. So we have a three carbon ring, so it's a cyclopropane. We have two side chains, an ethyl and a methyl, ethyl, methyl, so E before M, and they're on the same carbon. So we would take our first one, label that as number one, and use the small set to get the other ones. So again, we can go two different directions, even though there's no ends now, and where we designate our one, we can go clockwise or counterclockwise. In this case, since it's on the same carbon, we have a one ethyl, one methyl cyclopropane. So here's another one that uh, has two side chains, or ethyl methyl cyclopropane, but now they're in different carbons. We give our ethyl, the first one, the number one. And if we were to go clockwise, we go one, two, three. We'd say three methyl. We're in counterclockwise is one, two, two methyl. So we want to go in the direction that gives us our small set of numbers. So this becomes our one ethyl, two methyl cyclopropane. 